duit. So what's up guys? Today I will tell you about FSH that is follicular stimulating hormone. What? Just kidding. So today I will tell you about Linux file system hierarchy or file system hierarchy standard which defines the directory structure and its contents in all Linux operating system whether it may be Linux Mint, Ubuntu or Kali. Basically this explains where is the specific file and directory should be located and what it should contain. And if you are a Linux user or new to Linux system, you may have seen these directories but you might not know why this exists and what are their functions. So don't worry, I am here to tell you about it. So without any delay, let's get started. So first of all, let me know you about slash. So this is the starting point for Linux file system hierarchy in a Linux system means it is the root directory. Inside it, many subdirectories are contained that we are going to learn it about now. So let's move forward to the first subdirectory that is bin. So this contains command and other executable programs that may be used by both the system admin and by the user. Number 2 Boot This subdirectory contains all important required files used for booting up the system. Files inside this directory can be edited by root user easily. Number 3 ETC This directory contains system configuration files. Configuration files required for bootloaders but uh, that not required at the boot time. Okay. Okay. Number 4 Home This is the home directory for Linux user. Number 5 OPT OPT means optional. This directory contains additional add-on files or third-party software packages. Number 6 TMP This is the temporary space. This directory is for system programs that require temporary files as it's temporary. So this directory is cleared whenever system is booted or done reboot. USR This contains application programs and files used by user which are read-only data. Number 8 where this subdirectory contains unshareable and variable data files. This includes log file, temporary spool files like uh, mail spools, printer spools, etc. and other data not tied to a specific user. Number 9 Dev contains special device files for all devices. Device files are created during installation. All hardware files are present in this folder or directory. These special files are device drivers that are needed by system to function properly. Number 10 Lib directory So it contains library files used by system. Uh, but what it means? Simply it contains files which are used by an application or command for its execution and files needed to boot the system as well as run commands in the root file system. Number 11 Media This directory contains subdirectories which are used as mount point for removal media. It means when you insert any removal media like pen drive, CD-ROM, external SSD or any external storage device. The folders are made automatically inside this media directory for different external storage devices that may be on readable like CDR or readable and writable both like pen drive, SSD or any external storage devices. Number 12 MNT MNT directory is used for mounting file system temporarily when needed by the user. Number 13 root. This is the home directory for root user which is also known as the admin's work directory. 14 as bin. Same as the bin directory but contains binaries with root or super user privilege required only. It means command are executed by the root user only. Number 15 SRV. SRV contains site specific data which is served by the system. That means if you are using Apache HTTP server to serve a website then the website's file will be stored in the SRV directory. Number 16 Run This directory contains system formation data describing the system since it was booted that is the runtime data. Number 17 Proc Contains files that represent system and process information including curl processes. And the last, number 18, lost plus found. This is an important directory which is useful for recovering files that are not properly closed due to any reason such as power cut or system crash. It's kinda similar to recycle bin. 
So this was a basic but very important topic to know about a Linux system. Now you can easily identify directories of Linux file system hierarchy. Lastly, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and my YouTube analytics says that 80% of the regular people watching my channel haven't subscribed my channel yet. So please subscribe because it's free, free, free. See you guys in the next one.